So it seems that an absolutely massive chunk of the World Eaters Codex has been leaked to the internet. Let's talk core rules, unit profiles, and an interesting army of renown with a look over the juicy blood soaked details. Hello, welcome, and blood for the blood god. Because today on All Specs Tactics, we're talking through a great big World Eaters leak, which appears to have laid bare quite a lot of the fun stuff that's going to be coming in Codex World Eaters when it comes out. It's not been too long since we had that funny points cost page leak that I honestly thought was fake at the time, but then it swiftly seems to have been proved to be accurate, seeing as it predicted all the units that came out, and also seems to tie in quite well with the units that were revealed for them and the ones that were not shown. Today though, we've got something far more extensive, the core rules of the codex and a bunch of different data sheets, plus a few fun upgrades like characters and warlord traits and an army of renown. As normal with these leaks, I would certainly treat this with a pinch of salt. This one comes from a text leak posted to Facebook and Reddit, supposedly talking about the contents of a conversation by a couple of people who had access to playtest rules who were talking on a World Eaters Discord server. Overall, based on what we've seen before, it does look pretty plausible to me. Everything here fits with that points cost leak sheet that we've had so far, plus Games Workshop's previews of the models, and roughly how I'd expect the models to operate in-game given what we know. Obviously, it's still very much not confirmed, it's certainly not impossible, it could all be made up, plus if it is based on playtest rules, some things might change, or there might have been some miscommunications in the relaying of the data. In any case, Codex World Eaters has now been revealed, and that should be coming in January or February 2023, I suspect that we've probably seen all the new models that they'll receive now. My guess is that based on that points cost leak plus Games Workshop's reveal pattern that they probably won't get any more. I guess when we start to get rules previews though, we should know pretty quickly whether or not this leak is on the money. In any case, with all that being said, let's go through the contents. The things that have been described here are a boosted army trait, a pure army special rule called Blood Tithe, a seemingly Corn Demon Kin, Army of Renown, where you can mix certain World Eaters units with Corn Demons, Profiles and special rules for the majority of the new units, though not all of them, and all the warlord traits and some of the relics. What's not here appears to be stratagems, any certain points cost upgrades that the codex might bring, and a few unit profiles where they've talked about some of the abilities but not the stat lines. If we find out any more, I'll certainly report on it, so feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you'd like to see more World Eaters details. Perhaps one of the biggest things they seem to have confirmed though is that there appears to be no sub factions in the book, and this would again strike a bit of a different note to Death Guard and Thousand Sons both of which got some Plague Company or Great Cult type sub-faction rules. As rules section go, they were maybe a little bit on the weaker side, only offering things like stratagems and relics and warlord traits, but still I did think it was an interesting little twist that could shift your list building from one way or another. So maybe a bit disappointing that World Eaters don't get their own companies or warbands or anything like that, particularly as quite a lot of the Legion is generally fragmented and rampaging around the galaxy in their own free way. I don't think that, that necessarily surprises me all that much though, they do seem to be going a very different tack to the previous two codexes, such as restricting a bunch of options like cultists and generic lords, if that points cost preview is to be believed. Still though, maybe not 100% essential, I guess world eaters are kind of a sub-faction in themselves, might be Games Workshop trying to clear up a little bit of the rules bloat from their codexes, they do tend to be quite rules dense these days. Moving into the good stuff though, first up we have the Butcher's Nails, apparently a little bit consolidated from what it was before. Previously it had gone up to plus one attack in the first round of melee, usually when you charged, were charged, or heroic intervened. Now apparently it will be that, but also a plus one strength as well, if you satisfy the same criteria. My guess would be that this would represent you rolling in the mark of corn for basically every single unit in the book, and all of them would get it, whether they're infantry or vehicles or whatever. I would guess that you probably wouldn't get this in addition to the Mark of Corn, which is, say, listed on the World Eaters datasheet at the moment, giving you plus one strength on the charge. Might be wrong, though. I guess if that does turn out to be the case, then Strength 7 Berserkers are go. Overall, it basically gives you yet more damage on the turn that you charge in. The trait that they had previously was already pretty decent for that, to be honest, and I guess it's quite nice that the Mark of Corn style buffs will apply to everything, so I guess could help out with things like Chaos Spawn, for example. A plus one strength doesn't always make the biggest difference, say if you already had immense strength already, it might not make a difference between wounding on threes, but whenever it does make a difference, and you wound something on fours that you would have on fives, it will be absolutely brutal and a massive damage boost. I do feel though that World Eaters are probably not going to struggle too much for melee damage, it might be a bit more important to have the toughness of speed for reaching melee, and I kind of get a feeling that World Eaters might not have too many problems when they're there. 
I'd say perhaps the single most interesting part of the leak, though, is their pure army special rule, which is supposedly a mechanic called Blood Tithe. This one really reminds me of the previous Corn Demon Kin rule, going back to 7th edition, where you basically had to try and kill enemy units to sacrifice points for certain benefits, though back there it was often summoning demons. This definitely seems to go down a very similar vibe, though. It seems the normal idea is that you have to kill things, and then once you've killed things, you can spend Blood Tithe points on a bunch of different abilities. Supposedly, when you've accessed them, they then last for the rest of the game. The details as to the exact mechanics of this are a little bit light at the moment. Apparently, there's two different systems being talked about, either one where you get one point when you kill an enemy unit, and a plus one for monsters or vehicles, and a plus one for Titanics, or some sort of tally of wounds killed, similar to the Chaos Knight's way of doing things, where, say, killing a Terminator would give you three wounds, or killing a Rhino Tank would give you ten. I feel like the second way is maybe a more fair way of keeping it relevant against multiple different armies, but I guess it could be a little bit on the fiddly side. You'd have to spend the whole game tallying up your kills, though I guess that might be the sort of thing that World Eaters are into. In any case, whenever you met whatever arbitrary Talies Games Workshop has decided, you then supposedly get to spend your Blood Tithe points on a list of eight different abilities, my guess might be that you might be able to buy in one of these each turn if you have met the requisite amount of points. The ones to choose from are a plus one to hit, a nice melee buff provided you weren't hitting on twos already I guess. Sixes to hit in melee will auto wound, I guess that's probably best if you're going in with a whole bunch of low strength attacks. I feel like things like Corn Berserkers are going to like that particularly, or the Jackals if they get access to this. There's one for an extra pip of AP to all melee weapons. I guess that's one to go for if you're fighting against Terminators with stacking saves. There's one where you get an extra plus one to all attacks. That's pretty nice army-wide, to be honest. Not going to be useless on anything. There's one with a plus one to advance and charge. Maybe just that extra little boost that you might need to get into combat. And it could mean that you're making deep strike charges on a fluffy eight rather than a nine. There's one for a five plus save against mortal wounds. Maybe representing Korn's scorn of sorcery. That could be great to flex into if you say playing Grey Knights or Thousand Sons. There's one just for a bit more toughness army-wide, a 6 plus feel no pain on everything, that one seems very solid as well, maybe if you're more concerned about getting shot to ribbons before you make combat. And finally, and kind of ridiculous, but might be a little bit impractical, is reviving Angron if he's slain. Apparently if your beloved demon Primark goes down too early, then you could pass up getting a whole army buff and have him return to the table with 8 wounds remaining in your next reinforcement phase. Just on the face of that, I don't really think that there are any of those that sound like they're entirely useless. I guess once we get a bit more details as to how many blood tithe points they cost or whatever, it might be a bit easier to weigh them up. And I feel like the biggest power out of this one is that you can basically pick the ones that are most relevant to your matchup. Say for example, more attacks against hordes, extra AP against armies with high saves like Armor of Contempt Space Marines, or mortal wound protection against full-on psychic armies. I guess the biggest deal might be that you need to get some kills to get it going. I guess it means that World Eaters will have to warm up a bit, they need to kill some outlying enemy units before they activate their massive buffs, and then hopefully deal some crippling damage to the core of the enemy. Overall seems fun and fluffy, and looks like it could be well executed on paper, I guess we'll have to wait until we see the small print. Next up we've got some character upgrades, and first up a section of 6 Warlord traits, which according to this leak has an oddly restrictive system for selection. As with most other books, it seems that you get six of them, though apparently non-special characters will only be able to choose between the first three. So if those points cost leaks will be true, I guess that will be the Lord on Juggernaut, Demon Prince, and the Master of Executions, which will be the only three options for generic ones. Also, according to this, if the leaks are to be believed, then you'd only be able to have one Warlord trait and one Relic in the entire army. I feel like most people would hope that that wouldn't be true, it just feels like fighting on a back foot compared with a lot of other factions. I guess demons did have their oddly restrictive Warlord traits, where you could only have one, but even they got the ability to buy more relics if they needed. I guess if that's true, it might put a bit more focus on the unique characters, so Angron, Khan, and Lord Invocatus, as opposed to the generic ones. In any case, going through the options, first up, there's a mechanic to gain more blood tithe points. You get one every time your warlord manages to land the finishing blow on an enemy unit. Potentially seems okay on a melee monster. I guess we will have to see the full details of the blood tithe before we know how good that is, though. Otherwise, there's one for taking half damage in melee, doesn't help them against shooting though, and one for fighting first. Certainly doesn't hurt, but far less of a buff than making the enemy fight last. Next up, there's one for a 6-inch aura of removing obsec from enemy models. 
Apparently that's Angron's Warlord trait, and according to this leak, he only gets the one Warlord trait, not three, as he might have expected by the other couple of Demon Primarchs. Again, that maybe feels like a bit of a strange decision when they've given multiple traits to a lot of the others. Countering objective secured is pretty big for objectives though, just doubles down on making the one that Angron's on into something that's a bit of a no-go zone. Otherwise, there's one for a plus D3 attack, so there's six plus models within three inches. That one seems identical to the Arch Slaughterer one that already appears on the table of traits. Not really very good in my opinion. And then there's one that's a pre-game move for two core World Eater units that Lord Invocatus gets. That one on the other hand does seem really quite nice. Getting World Eaters closer to the enemy army and glorious melee is probably the thing that they want to have. Overall, I must admit, maybe not the most inspiring table of Warlord traits I've seen. I kind of feel like the Lord Invocatus one might be the most interesting. Though I guess if you take Angron, you'll probably have to make him the Warlord. Otherwise, for Relics, there's three of them previewed here. We don't know if they get more yet. I would certainly hope so based on other armies. First up, there's one with a morale debuff. Every slain model counts as double for morale purposes. I guess not a terrible leadership debuff, could combo with demons and things, but not as useful as just extra damage in my opinion. There's a relic axe of some sort, that becomes a strength plus 2, AP minus 3 and damage 2 weapon, where 6 is to hit gain you 2 extra hits. I guess that might represent either Gorefather or the Berserker Glaive I suppose. And there's one that's a buffing ability, where you select a unit in the command phase, and you grant sixes to hit auto wound on that unit. I wonder if that might be a new incarnation of the Helm of Furory or the Banner of Rage. After those three, again maybe not super inspiring, I'd say that the buffing ability looks the best though, should be great for Terminators with all those accursed weapons, and of course Corn Berserkers. Moving on, let's go through a few of the Elite's infantry profiles, and first up we have the new Jackal Cultists, the extra blendy melee version of standard cult followers. According to the points leaks, these are 7 points per model, come in squad sizes of 10 to 20, and there's a few upgrades they can take, including a big chainsword, a skull masher, and an icon, all of which are 5 points each. Their stat line basically seems to be that of cultists, but with 2 attacks, a hit on 4s, a leadership 7 on their leader, a strength and toughness 3, though I'd hope that they might get the legion trait type thing, where they get the extra pip of attack and extra pip of strength. If they don't, then their combat still looks like it'd be very underwhelming. The leader gets 3 attacks, and is apparently a different model to this Dishonored model that Games Workshop previewed, the one on the bottom right. Apparently the Dishonored is just a big cultist within the unit, his only difference is that he gets plus 1 strength, and I think that he's armed with that Skull Masher upgrade, which apparently is strength user, AP minus 2 and damage 2, but gives him double the attacks, so 4 of them. Otherwise, in general their melee is AP minus 1, I'd hope that they get the faction bonus from that, because otherwise it's just not really going to be very strong hitting at strength 3. And they've got the option for a Mauler Chain Blade for an extra 5 points, at strength plus 2, AP minus 2, and damage 2, that gives you a minus 1 to hit. I feel like that's the big two-handed Chain Blade that one of the cultists had. Finally, the unit has a once per game boost, where you get to kill D3 of your own jackals for a plus 1 to your strength, Maybe that represents them injecting their 8 drops of World Eater's blood. I guess that could be the other way that they could get to strength 4 for a little bit. Even if it costs them a few models, I feel like often if these guys get mixed up in combat, a lot of them are going to die one way or the other, so maybe it might just be best to go out in a blaze of glory. Overall, I feel like a lot of their power will depend on whether or not they get that World Eater's faction bonus, or if they're excluded from it like several other cultists are. If they really are 7 points, I feel like that will be quite expensive just for objective camping roles, and these guys aren't even particularly tough for doing so. Moving on, we've got the 8 blood letters inside one world eater that are the 8 bound. As per the points leaks, 40 points per model and come in squad sizes of 3 to 6. They kind of seem similar to Chaos Possessed, if Chaos Possessed could get a mark of corn, a movement of 9 inches, hitting on 3s, strength 6 and toughness 5, 3 wounds, leadership 8 and a 3 plus save with a 5 plus demon inball save. Annoyingly, it looks like their attacks profile wasn't shared on the leak, so we don't know exactly how strong they'll be in combat. I would be very surprised if they don't wind up being damaged to melee though, kind of similar to the regular possessed, and I sort of feel like for costing a whole bunch more points, they're unlikely to have less attacks than regular possessed do. That would be 5 attacks each. Whether they're core or not will also be a big deal for how strong they wind up being, and they do have a pre-game move built into them, they can move 9 inches before the game begins, hopefully take up some positions in the middle of the board, and be prepared to charge after that. I feel like that good movement characteristic in a pre-game move does make them super interesting, seems pretty nice for putting early pressure on the enemy, and meaning that they can't just sit in their own deployment zone and not worry about charges, as these guys could easily do a first turn charge if there's nothing screening them. 
The leagues for the Exalted 8-bound, these had them at 45 points per model, and 3 only per unit, you can't build them up to 6. The profile for these from these leagues has them hitting on a 2+, plus, and the other improvement getting a 4+, plus inball save as well, so the extra 5 points gives them an extra bit of toughness, and hit just that little bit harder in combat. Again, the base melee profile for these guys hasn't been shared, though apparently the chain fists that were previewed by Warhammer Community do indeed have a profile, and they're going to be damaged 3 in some way. I'd guess seeing as they don't cost any more, you're probably going to be trading out something for that though. Maybe a minus one to hit or fewer attacks perhaps. I'd guess that they'd be the ones that are going to be a bit more melee capable of chewing through the heaviest tanks that the enemy has to offer. And supposedly even have a stratagem for plus one damage. Probably really quite good if it's one CP. A bit mediocre if it's two. Otherwise, supposedly these guys have some sort of rule to prevent enemy fallback. I'd guess like a lot of similar rules in 9th edition, it might well not apply to things like monsters or vehicles. And it might work similar to how the Warp Talons do it in the Chaos Space Marines Codex. Maybe roll off with your opponent, and if you win, then they don't get to fall back. They don't have any mention of a pre-game move with this, though. It looks like maybe these guys might be less of the Outriders and more of the core freaks of your army. Perhaps some of the nastiest melee punches to hit home at the enemy. I feel like trading out the special rules and giving them some extra heavy melee hitting power means that both squads could be interesting. The pre-game move is awesome, but so is a 4 plus invul hitting on 2s and massive damage 3 with chain fists. Next up we've got some details as to the big man himself. Perhaps one of the weirdest things about the points leak was that it had Angron on 360 points and if that does indeed turn out to be accurate then he's looking very cheap for a demon primarch. I guess compared with Magnus and Mortarion he won't be throwing around psychic buffs or anything. And if he's only got one warlord trait, he might have a little bit less going on, but I'm sure he's going to break things in melee pretty hard. Supposedly his stat line gets a 2 plus save and a 4 plus invul with 18 wounds, though we don't know the exact details of his melee attacks yet, which I'm sure will be pretty legendary. All they said on the leaked Facebook and Reddit posts was that the melee was supposedly very very strong indeed, but doesn't have any mechanics to ignore damage caps or invuls at all, only that he's just got so many attacks of massive high strength and damage that it's likely not going to matter. He'll be taking so many saves that you fail at least some invul saves, and I wouldn't be too surprised if he got some sort of mechanic like mortal wounds on sixes as well. I still would be kind of surprised if they didn't make him one of the best melee characters out of all of 40k so far. Otherwise, he apparently has the Warp Locus keyword as well. That would allow him to be a focal point for deep striking blood letters very close to the enemy. That could be pretty nice for delivering them alongside his advance. And the objective secured countering thing does seem pretty handy. I'm sure he's going to be throwing himself towards the enemy in some form. Taking some points along the way alongside your own troops seems like a good combo. Based on the other prime marks, I'm sure he'll get some buffing abilities as well. Usually selecting one unit for four rerolls to hit, and then having an aura of reroll ones to hit the same as the Lords. Four rerolls to hit could be interesting, seeing as there's a couple of ways of getting auto wounds on sixes. You could potentially fish for those against hard targets. I'll be very interested to see his full profile though. It's going to be fun to see what the Red Angel of Corn can do. Next up, we move on to Khan the Betrayer. 140 points as per the points leak, so that one would have him the same as he is previously. I'd guess that he wouldn't be changing in any too enormous ways since the White Dwarf update for him, as he had a slightly new profile from that to start with. And in general, things seem largely similar, though it looks like he might have swapped out his Fights Twice rule with just getting more attacks base. This leak appears to have him on 9 attacks if that's accurate, which would be pretty crazy. I guess compared with Fighting Twice, you would get slightly less attacks, but that one does have its disadvantages, as it means that the opponents can usually use the counter-offensive stratagem to interrupt between the two phases, and potentially kill him before he gets the second set. Otherwise, things largely seem the same for him. A 4 plus invul save, still has his plasma pistol locked into overcharge mode. His melee is strength user, AP 4 and damage 2, as would often be at strength 7 and 10 attacks with the new world eaters trait I suppose. And he's still got his fun betrayer rule, where at the end of the movement phase, on a 2 plus he's got a chance to deal 2 mortal wounds to a friendly unit within 6 inches. I guess it's either best to keep a distance, or have some expendable grunts, maybe some spawn or something for him to beat up. Moving on, we've got Lord Invocatus, the new demonkin type character riding a juggernaut. The points leak had this guy at 160 points, and again we don't have a stat line for this guy, but a few interesting special rules. First up, supposedly he'll be able to move quite fast and has fly. Maybe that does seem a bit weird, judging by the model, which clearly doesn't have wings or anything, but the lore of this guy is all a bit supernatural. He basically rushes towards the enemy with the sky burning on fire behind him, and can supposedly ride a wave of fire towards the enemy, so maybe it isn't the most far-fetched rules leak in the world. I guess it'd certainly be handy for some shenanigans around ruins and things, seeing as his cavalry, which could often get in the way of on-foot juggernauts, I suppose. Apparently his melee will be able to ignore invulnerable saves innately. 
According to the leak, the only model in the codex that can do this, and in terms of buffs, he's got a rather useful aura of plus a 2 inch move to core units, and that seems to be very helpful indeed for delivering them into combat. Anything that makes world eaters tougher or faster, I think, will be a big win. I feel like they're almost always going to have melee damage kind of sorted once they get there. Otherwise, I'd guess seeing as he's called a lord, he'll probably have the standard reroll ones to hit lord aura. And overall, after hearing these rules, I feel like he might well be an interesting choice to lead an army. Ignore's inborn melee is great. An extra 2 inch movement to your foot troops will be good for getting them forward. And likely being both faster and tougher than most units around is also a pretty decent thing. I guess might have some competition with demon princes on that front though. Next up, and perhaps one of the most interesting and surprising things from the leak, is apparently that there will be a army of renown in the book. Until recently, we haven't normally been seeing in the main codexes, but the Imperial Knights book had the Free Blade Lance in there, and the Chaos Demons one had the one for fielding Bellicor included, so it's not that much of a stretch. Details as to the fine print of this are pretty sketchy at the moment, but it sounds on paper like it aims to be a reimagination of Corn Demon Kin, where you have both World Eaters and Corn Demons fighting as part of the same army, and both getting some interesting buffs. Apparently the slightly disappointing side of this though is that it sounds like it's only demonic units out of the World Eaters Codex, so apparently Angron, the 8 round variants, Lord Invocatus, and apparently some land raiders to transport them in. I guess if there's nothing to stop you fielding demon engines in the specific rules, they would have the demon keyword as well. It would only be a subset of units within the codex, so I guess no world eaters, corn berserkers or terminators, and then just ally all of that to some corn demons. I don't know whether you'd have to fill them in their own detachment, or they might have some sort of weird rules like say the Inari have, where you can mix them in within the same detachment slots. I'd guess the models in the army would receive some sort of passive buffs to compensate for all the units that they're not taking. Most of the armies of renown get that in one form or another, but supposedly the formation has a bunch of decent stratagems for 8 bound, with things like a plus 1 to wound for them in combat, never a bad thing. A 6 inch consolidation move, I guess that would be for any unit in the army I suppose. One where 8 bound can move a bit closer if the enemy kills a model in their shooting phase, that could be very disruptive if the extra movement lets them hide behind terrain or something. And one buffing stratagem that sounds a bit odd, where you get to choose between the buffs of obsec, wound rolls of 6 causing a mortal wound, or 4 plus save against enemy mortal wounds. I don't know if that applies to the 8 bound, or just is in general out of the army. Could be an interesting way to play them if it's done right. Really cool to see Games Workshop giving some fan service to the much requested Corn Demon Kin style rules. Not that you couldn't play World Eaters allied with Corn Demons anyway, you just have to take, say, a quarter of your army of them. But I feel like this army might lose some points with some people if you can't field things like Berserkers and Terminators, which I feel like if you're playing World Eaters, you're usually going to want to do. I guess it's not bad though if you're planning on picking up a whole truckload of those 8 bound models. Otherwise, I thought we might just briefly touch on that points leak once more. As I mentioned in the last video, I thought there were plenty of reasons to doubt it when we first saw it, including having the oddly fortunate page number of 88, and a whole bunch of generic units that Death Guard and Thousand Sons can take, they're just not there at all. It does look, however, that this points page does fit in with everything that we've heard from Games Workshop. Out of their previews, any of the models that they showed fighting alongside the World Eaters army in their action shots, they're all represented here, and none of the things that are weirdly missing are available in their publicity shots and things. If it's true, then it means that indeed World Eaters won't be able to field things like raptors, bikers, cultists, lords on foot, mutilators, or vindicators, or I guess regular possessed, seeing as we have the 8 bound now. Raptors and bikers didn't appear, 4,000 sons or death guards, so maybe not the biggest surprise. I feel like their use isn't that far from World Eaters lore though, both of which are for kind of fast combat troops that want to hurtle towards the enemy. Cultists seem like a slightly stranger mission, and will make it a bit more expensive to hold home field objectives if you have to shell out for those more expensive jackals. Lords on foot not being there is just a bit of a strange choice. It just seems very odd that any full-blown Chaos Lord of the World Eaters now suddenly has to be riding a juggernaut or be Khan the Betrayer, and he can't have any other flavour. Vindicators were present for Thousand Sons, so again it's kind of odd to see them gone. And I guess instead of Mutilators, it looks like those leaked parts they showed off were in fact part of the Exalted 8 bound, so it seems that no new kit is coming for them. Fast Attack is only going to be Chaos Spawn now. I feel like in this codex they're going to have quite a lot of competition for just the role of running forward and smashing stuff, though I guess small 25 point units could be handy for just messing around on objectives and things. I don't feel like you'd really want them for the heavy lifting quite as much, not compared with what they can do in say Thousand Sons. Otherwise, they actually get surprisingly good access to the Chaos Heavy support line. No Vindicators, but things like Defilers, Morlefiends, 
forge fiends and things like that. Though I have to admit, I feel like they're probably not going to be very strong choices for the army. A kind of niche in Chaos Space Marines in general, even in the legions that focus on shooting like Iron Warriors, I feel like they're unlikely to have any particularly nice shooting buffs here. Perhaps out of the generic vehicles, the Rhinos might be particularly interesting, getting your Berserkers to the front in a cheap and effective way. I guess more Fiends could also be interesting, depending on what sort of combat buffs they can pick up. As mentioned, Angron's looking really cheap at this for 360 points, maybe might be a Primarch that you can actually afford to be a bit more aggressive with, as opposed to the big points cost of things like Magnus and Mortarian, really meaning that you need to keep them absolutely safe, otherwise you're going to lose too much of your army too early. Particularly with that Blood Tithe mechanic to bring him back in later turns, seems like he could be at least reasonable enough just to throw towards the enemy and break as much stuff as he can. Also, as basically confirmed by Warhammer community by their picture of regular Terminators in World Eaters colours, it does appear no Red Butchers as new models. I'd guess probably the same as the previous Codex, it looks like they might well just have a stratagem to upgrade them to fighting twice or extra attacks or something. It could also be a points cost upgrade for the Codex, in a similar sort of way to the Cabalite retinues and things that the Dark Eldar got. There's no points cost upgrade section listed on this page though, so I guess potentially the stratagem being similar might be the most likely case of affairs. In any case though, some very interesting rumours there. They do seem pretty plausible to me for the most part, not very wishlisty, and seem very in line with what Ninth Edition might bring. Let me know your thoughts on the rumours down in the comments below, whether you think that they're accurate or not, and if they are, which bits are the most disappointing or the most exciting. I think rules-wise for the bits that we've seen, I really quite like that Blood Tithe mechanic, that seems very fun and fluffy and pretty powerful. Out of the units, Lord Invocatus seems like he could be a strong choice, and I quite like the idea of pre-game move 8 bound, potentially bringing Cornate Fury to the enemy deployment zone right from turn 1. The Army of Renown will be a very nice touch as well, Demon, Kin, Maze and Yu. As for disappointing stuff, I feel like the Relics and Warlord trait system, if accurate, is a little bit sad. Plus no unique companies or warbands or anything is a little bit unfortunate. Feels just a little bit of a downgrade from things like Death Guard and Thousand Sons in that area. Look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts though, let me know what you think. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, including any more leaks and previews of the World Eaters, I'm sure we'll get some more details in due course. Finally, if you are getting good value out of all of these videos on the channel, and you'd like to help keep them coming, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that link down in the video description if you're interested. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.